Hi, I'm Shar Ellingson. I'm a teacher in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And I'm Chris Bacham, a teacher at Anoka High School, which is a suburban school near Minneapolis. Um, we're here today to talk, to talk to you about something called uh, Critical Response Protocol, uh, which is a process we found that helps facilitate uh, academic discussions in science classrooms. Uh, the process actually originated in the dance community and the artists used it as a way to get feedback and deepen the reflection around their work. Uh, we have ended up adapting it for students uh, in order to give them a process in which they look at data deeply uh, and offer feedback to each other and it also allows them time to reflect on the meaning of data. Um, CRP is a series of five prompts that are sequenced from lower level thinking to higher order thinking and they're deceptively simple actually. Um, the first one is what do you notice? Um, what do you notice about an image or data? What does it remind you of? How does it make you feel? What questions do you have? And then finally uh, the students are asked to speculate as to intended meaning. Uh, we have found for the process to work as intended. Uh, time must be allotted to show each prompt individually uh, and give students time to respond on their own paper uh, for one prompt at a time and then each student shares their responses. Uh, and I think uh, one of the most important factors for success with this protocol is that each student does share their individual response. So, as the students share, um, we found that it's helpful to uh, post their responses in a place in the room where they can remain visible throughout the process. Um, this allows them to um, be able to refer back to them. Um, and the other thing we've found across time is that the process seems to decrease anxiety in the students around having academic conversations and it also slows the students down and in the process this helps to deepen their thinking. Uh, one of my students actually uh, remarked after going through this process that it really gave her confidence to participate. She said it was the first time she had voluntarily uh, or volunteered to speak on a topic at this level and I also noticed an increase uh, in willingness to, to participate in discussions at future, uh, in future classes. So across time, we've come to realize that one of the reasons this works so well is because it really helps uh, students generate language that is meaningful for them around the, the scientific topic of study. Um, in the past, prior to using this uh, process, I would always start with language, um, you know, a text to read or something to help contextualize it. What this process does is flip that. Instead of starting with language, we're actually starting with mathematical representation of the data. Or in uh, this particular case, we started with an image of an abstract concept in nanotechnology. And by starting with the process and taking them through uh, one step at a time, the students are generating the language that is meaningful for them and we think facilitates the meaning making process. Thank you. Thank you.